Welcome to our webinar on the 2020 National AFC Conference, How to Submit a Request for Proposal or RFP. Uh, just off the top, I would like to mention that the conference will be taking place in Denver, Colorado this year. And the pre-conference will be on June 15th and the main conference will be June 16th through the 18th. Um, in addition to having the RFP, process open registration um, with the early bird rate is also currently available. Okay, to get us started today, um, also wanted to mention one more thing, uh, the AFC 2020 conference, the theme for this is Employment First Elevated. So you can see um, in the corner of this slide, the mountains in Denver, Colorado, I'm really thinking about how to move forward um, with employment first. So. Uh, the conference, like I said, 15th through 18th of June. On Monday, we will have pre-conference sessions, and these are three-hour workshops that are really um, longer, more um, specific to topics, and it really provides an opportunity to dive deeper into information that people are looking for, training, great way to get yourself out there. Uh, Tuesday, we will have our breakout sessions as we have in the past. Uh, on Tuesday, though, we're really going to be focusing on grassroots advocacy. I'll talk a little bit later about the different tracks, but the focus for this day is going to be on grassroots advocacy. Additionally, on Wednesday, more breakout sessions, uh, but the focus for Wednesday is going to be on business best practices. Last year, we um, offered a similar track, and we're looking to hopefully engage employers and businesses from the area and surrounding states uh, to partake in these breakout sessions. We'll also be offering SHRM credit during those sessions, so it's a win-win. hotel and registration information. As I said, we're going to be in Denver. Uh, we're going to actually have the conference right at the Hyatt Regency in Denver. Uh, a few tips here. If you are registering and you know that there's a number of people from your organization or maybe people in your network, you can get $50 off of each additional professional registration if you register multiple people at the same time. Uh, it's pretty clear on the registration link, but I just wanted to mention it here. Additionally, um, if you are trying to convince your employer that you need to attend this conference, uh, we wanted to give you some resources to share. So I'll show you on the website a little bit later, but we did create a support letter to assist you and it is on the website. So I'll show you that it's in a Word document and it's a great resource um, if you're trying to get permission or funding um, to attend the conference. The submission deadline for RFPs is going to be on December 13th, 2019 at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, the confirmation of the proposal submission will be emailed to the lead presenter. I'm going to show you how, how to do the application online and you'll be able to see where there's um, information to fill in who is the lead presenter and then where you can add additional presenters. So we just want to send you know that reminder make sure everyone knows that not everyone on that team of presenters is going to get an email it will just be the lead presenter. Uh, also additionally we want to have a variety of presenters at our conference so presenters are limited to um, one pre-conference submission, one presentation submission, which um, encompasses breakout sessions, campfire conversations, and one APC talk. So um, in total, there's a maximum of three presentation totals that you can apply for. Last year, we did some surveys and we polled people on what they were looking for. So we asked the question of what do AFC 2020 attendees want? And we found out, again, we want information on supported employment. We want new ideas. We want information from states and what they're doing, specifically in terms of best practices, information on transition, networking, 
and of course employment first. So um, a lot of the same things, but again, we're looking at um, keeping updated within the field. Employment first elevated, our title for the conference. Um, here you can see that AFSI accepts presentations with the following expectations. And I'm gonna outline these. There are a few more um, descriptors within the document that I'm gonna show you in a few minutes, but presenters need to demonstrate exceptional expertise around proposed content. Sessions are focused on participant learning and not just lecturing. We want those interactive activities. We want conversation, not just someone standing and lecturing in the front of the room. Um, big one here, sessions are not intended to be a platform for selling products or services. Um, we want to make sure that it's not a commercial. Our, our participants are not there for that. They're there to learn information, make connections, and get some training. Uh, presenters are required to provide all slides and handouts that are reflected in the content for attendees by May 29th, 2020. If you attended last year, you'll probably remember that we used an app with the conference schedule on it, and we're able to upload, upload PowerPoints and documents that would be included in the presentation right on the app. But in order to do that ahead of time, and be ready to go for the conference, we need it by May 29th. Additionally, learning objectives need to be tailored to the learning level that is designated. So we have included um, learning levels. Again, I'll talk about that in a minute, um, but it needs to be corresponding to the learning objectives. And finally, topics need to be forward-thinking, challenging, and reflect the mission of Employment First. After those RFPs are sent into us and everyone applies, uh, there is an evaluation process. The program committee um, will review presentation proposals based on the following criteria. And this process takes place um, without names being on those RFPs. So it's a blind um, assessment. We take a look and we really wanna know um, who is providing us with great information um, within the RFP, not who the actual person is submitting it. So once we go through and we rate them, then we will contact the person that applied. Uh, so the program committee, like I said, is gonna follow this criteria. They're gonna look at completion of all required information, alignment with APSI's mission and conference topics, clarity and relevance of topic, relevance to intended audience, presentation approach and level of participation engagement, quality of interactive activities, contribution to new or innovative practices to inclusive employment, relevance to the conference strand. I'm gonna show you what the strands are, extent to which the proposal captures emerging trends in practice and research, organizational outline and flow of the presentation and also tangible takeaways so applications directives and goal setting opportunities so we want people to be able to use what they're learning in the different sessions um, moving forward in their job some important dates for presenters um, i mentioned it before but december 13th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the call for presentations closes. March 27th, 2020, you're gonna get that notice um, for if you have been selected to do a session at National APSI. And again, I'm just gonna say that's gonna go to the lead presenter. On April 15th, you're gonna receive the session date and time, and it's gonna be emailed to the presenter on May 1st, Chosen presenters must be registered. I'm just gonna stop here and remind everyone that if you are a presenter, you need to be registered. Um, additionally, on May 29th, 2020, all presentation handouts are due to me, erica at afc.org. And finally, our conference is taking place on June 16th through the 20th, 2020. 
Here you can see the submission proposal submission form can be found right here at www.afc.smfcapply.org. If you aren't familiar with our website, you can see here that I've pulled it up and it is apc.org. If you look all across the top, of the website, you can see that there is a drop down for Get Educated. You're going to click here and you're going to click right on 2020 National APSI Conference. I'm going to walk through what is available on our website and the different areas that you're going to find information to help you with that RFP process. Okay, you can see here as we scroll down. There's information about the conference, general information, and then as we move further down, you can see that there are um, little squares on the side, on the left-hand side. You can see it says about the conference. Here you can find that general information, what you can take advantage of as an attendee. There's stuff about employment first here, and then there's a short video on why people have gone in the past. If you click on the next link down, title registration, you can see that there is a link right at the top to click here to register. But as you scroll down, you can see that where it says, will my employer help me attend? This is where I talked about that Word document that we provided in support of attending the conference that you can use it for your employer. And you just click here and it's gonna download that document. Additional information is about registering as a group, getting that $50 off at every additional registration, if it's a professional registration. And then here you can see our early bird rate and it ends on January 31st. Scrolling down, we have information about pre-registration. You can see from February 1st to April 30th, our mid rate um, does go up. That's why we're encouraging people to take advantage of the early bird. And then our regular rate that would be from May 1st to June 16th. And again, if you don't wanna scroll up, you can just click here to register. Okay, moving on, the next one down is Request for Proposals, the main focus of this webinar. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll down. This is an overview of what APSI is looking for. You want that data-driven presentation with interactive ideas and activities. We already talked about this in terms of what APSI is accepting. Here we have the submission deadline again, and here is what I like the best here. Um, you can see there are two buttons. One says download, call for presentation policies and application. On the other side is the link to actually apply with your RFP. So this is gonna be after you pull your thoughts together. I'm gonna click here on the call for presentations, policy and application. Now what happens is you're gonna get a document and it's a few pages, but it's very specific information for the RFP process. You can see here it's guidelines and policies, and I'm going to scroll down and highlight a few things on here. A lot of this is similar to what was on the website and what we covered just now. Levels of learning. This is an important thing. We really want to have presentations and sessions that are appropriate for all different people from all different um, learning levels, stakeholders, we want to have something for everyone. So as you're filling out your proposal form online, you're gonna to have to choose, is your session an introductory session that's really um, providing knowledge? And it would be a session that would introduce basic building blocks and information on employment first. 
Uh, this is probably for someone that may be new to the field and may not have been to our conference before. The next one would be our intermediate level. Uh, this session is going to present more strategic application of introductory knowledge in Employment First. And this is probably for someone that has been in the field and might be experiencing some challenges. And they need ideas and encouragement for competitive and integrative employment. Our last one is going to be that advanced learning level. And that's going to be someone that has um, a mastery of that knowledge. They may have been in the field for quite a few years. And it's going to be discuss discussing innovative practices and applications, strategic challenges, and it's going to provide um, some guidance from a subject matter expert in the employment support field. So when you get to that point, please be careful and please be aware of what you're choosing. Further down, you can see that we have a section on conference session formats. These are similar to what we've had in the past, but we wanted to make sure that we highlighted it. So you can see we're going to still have that topical breakout session. It could be 60 or 75 minutes. Um, if there's one a time that kind of meets your need or the length of your presentation, choose one or the other, or you can put in both if you think it can be adapted. Additionally, we're going to have APSI Talks. Um, we had it last year. This is similar to a TED Talk, and it's going to have very concise information that allows the presenter to share that information in five slides. Uh, typically, we have four people that present during that time, and they each get about 10 minutes for that presentation. We stuck with our campfire conversations. Um, I love these. It's really a facilitated conversation with the attendees. And, and then after that, after that 15 minutes, you're going to have some interactive ideas, um, comments, insight, questions, maybe some activities. We want people to be engaged and participate in this conversation. And this is typically a 60 minute session. This year, we made sure to add our pre-conference RFP um, in with the rest of the conference. We want to really um, provide as many opportunities at the Colorado um, National Conf APSI Conference. Uh, so here we have, it's really an opportunity to delve into a topic at depth and focusing on engaging adult learners. These are longer three-hour sessions, and that would be taking place on June 15th. Now we're going to move on to those conference tracks. In the past, we have had innovation, innovative practices, and this is a track that's typically um, intended to engage entry-level professionals, um, employment support professionals, mid-level managers, advocates, and funders. We tried to provide a little more um, guidance in this area in terms of what we're looking for. So you can see here that we have listed mental health, school to work transition, employment supports and employment employer engagement, technology in the workplace, diversity and employment supports. And that's really looking at a variety of populations that might, um, might have some cultural competency, gender disparities, veterans and aging and employment. So looking at some different um, populations and providing information and support that we can use to move forward. We did include something called pushing the boundaries. This is if you have a great innovative idea and in presentation, but it doesn't really fit with the areas above. So you can click on this area and then move on and, and entering your information. This year we did add a strand called Emerging Trends in Research and Policy. We have found that a lot of our attendees have done um, work with collecting data and research, and we want to be able to share that information. So we're helping, we're hoping that the FC attendees take a look at the big picture of system and wide scale movements. We also have organizational growth. And this is looking at um, track. It's a track that would be geared towards mid-level managers and organizational leaders leading employment teams to support you in learning to 
how to fund employment services, manage and encourage the professional development of your staff. So here we have included some um, specific ideas, which would be diversifying the workforce, planning for the future, provider transformation, staff development, and again, we included that pushing the boundaries. If something that you really feel like is um, it's a good fit for organizational growth, you can click on that pushing the boundaries and enter your information. We also added grassroots advocacy this year. And I mentioned earlier, but that's gonna be taking place on Tuesday. So this is really um, engaging in conversations about what's happening at the state and local levels so that we can learn from each other. Colorado has been doing a lot of wonderful things with Employment First, so we're hoping that they can provide us some highlights specific to their state. But we also know that there's many other states that have been doing some innovative and exciting things. Uh, we're hoping to get presentations that are um, aligned with Employment First state stories, self-advocates and families, um, state approaches to Employment First policy and funding. And again, we included that pushing the boundaries just in case you feel like your grassroots advocacy um, doesn't fit into the above options. As I also mentioned earlier, on Wednesday, we're gonna have that business best practices track and it's Wednesday. This is um, aimed at engaging business leaders who currently or are interested in employing a diverse workforce while focusing on cutting edge practices to build a more inclusive workplace. Uh, I mentioned earlier there will be SHRM credit and that stands for Society for Human Resource Management and there will be credit provided for attendees that go to those classes. Next up on our sheet is topics. We've listed a few topics that we are really interested in receiving RFPs around. I'm just gonna name a few, but you can see here we have career pathways, conflict management, cross-culture communication, diversity councils, eliminating barriers, leadership development, mental health, public policy, veterans employment, women in leadership. So we have a variety of um, suggestions. And again, these are um, some topics that we're very eager to get some RFPs on. As we look down, you can see that there are um, reminders for that application guideline. We did release um, the RFP for people to start applying on October 30th. As I mentioned earlier, the call for proposals will be closed on December 13th. Uh, we've included information on the evaluation process, which we talked about earlier. And there are also presentation policies here. I'm gonna scroll down and show you um, the form that you can use ahead of time to fill out before you actually go into the application online. We also have some resources. Feel free to click on those. More helpful resources. Okay, here it says helpful guide for submitting your proposal. And you can see here that we're suggesting that prior to entering your submission, you can use this Word document to get your thoughts pulled together. Um, we have the link here for the RFP. Um, so you can go ahead and click on that. But as we scroll down, I'm just gonna show you briefly that we have the title, we have presenter information. We're gonna have the um, conference session formats that we talked about earlier. Everything that is here is going to be the same as the online application. You can cut and paste the information that you put here to make it a little easier on yourself. We do offer ethics credit. So if you are gonna have a presentation that has um, information in it, please feel free to click on those to find out if it would work and then include that information. There needs to be at least three learning objectives. And then we have information on pre-conference as well. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at erica at afc.org. I've brought us, 
I brought us back to the website and I wanted to show you where you can click to actually access the application online. So you can see here it says apply request for proposals online application. I'm clicking here. It's going to bring you to this website. Now I already have an account so you can see my name is up here. If you do not have an account yet, you are going to just register. So you're gonna provide your information and then you're gonna be able to do the application. Since I've been in ABSI Apply before, you can see that I have three applications started. So I'm gonna click here. And it's gonna bring me to an application that I had already um, worked on so I could show you what it looks like. So you can see here that there are different tasks. There's a policy agreement task, and I'm gonna click on it just so I can show what it looks like. There's um, the policy agreements that we looked at earlier before. I'm gonna scroll down. And you just have to provide your information and the date, and then you'll click complete. The second task, I'm clicking on it, is going to be the application form that is the same as the Word document I shared earlier. So you could just cut and paste your information, but if you wanted to type it right in directly, that is okay. You can save something and go back and edit it. So you can see here, there's the examples of the conference strand, the conference format. Um, I had to select a focus like group that would be um, appropriate to attend it. So I put school to work transition. There's your abstract. And then there's a more detailed description. Moving down, you can see that the learning levels are there. I chose introductory. And then I also was able to pick my primary audience. And you can see that it's um, K through 12 students and families. I picked um, entry level professionals as a secondary one. And then you can see I included my three learning objectives. I also have my interactive activities and I have done this presentation before. If you say yes, you do have to enter um, where it was done. You also have that choice of the 70 minute or 60 minutes if you're doing a topical breakout. Uh, I do want to stress that it says time slots are not guaranteed, but we will try our best. After you have um, approved of this step, you're gonna click on the presenter information. This is where you provide the lead presenter's information first. Don't forget that you're gonna need to include a bio in the third person, which can be a little awkward. And then you have the option to add additional presenters. So this is something that you would do if you're presenting as a team and you can um, add more than one. So um, when you get to that point, feel free to do that. Additionally, you can see here that you can review and submit. So I'm gonna take a look at it. My tasks are complete. I'm gonna scroll down and make sure everything is okay. And at this point, if you feel like everything is correct on there, you're gonna click on the submit your application. When you get that, you're gonna see that it says application submitted. Thank you for your application. I'm gonna go back and just click on where it says my applications. It's going to bring me back to it, the presentations that I was working on or completed. You can see here that um, the one that I just submitted, it has a little green check in that circle that says submitted. There's another one I started here and you can see it still says draft not submitted. So you will be able to see if you, um, you know, where you are in the process by going to that main page. Additionally, as I mentioned before, you're going to get an email if you're the lead presenter telling you that you have submitted the RFP. This is the conclusion of our webinar. 
And I just want to remind people um, that they are due on December 13th. So please get your information in. If you have any questions, reach out to me, Erica at abc.org, and I'd be happy to help you with any questions you might have. Have a great day.